he just loves watching Cade. He's like, oh, every time this guy's, he, he's a big fan of you because everybody loves watching you tap everybody out. <laughs> and these guys get all aroused when they see you just manhandle these Here comes the sus. Boys. Here comes the yeah. sus. <laughs> For real. How, why, why can no one give a compliment without you like. You can't say aroused when a man watches another <laughs> man. Am, am, am I right? Amazed, Benny, or what's the word? Yeah, yeah, you were amazed. on the right track yeah. and then aroused came out. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's the word? <laughs> amazed. <laughs> amazed. You can use that word amazed. Intrigued. Yeah. Everybody intrigued. Okay. Yeah, amazed. Yeah. Intrigued. Here's the biggest thing. Cade. The Rotolo brothers are probably the two greatest grapplers in the world, and they're 21 years old. They're twins. There's two of them. What what are you looking like at? Sa- San Diego, which is even more beamed up than me. <laughs> this girl just, it's, it's bad. It's oh, bad. It's, we need both to drag him down here. Both of y'all in love? Yeah, it, it happened like, in a, the thing is though, I've been two years in, and then Ty's like two months in. So it's like. Uh, the same girl? <laughs> definitely not that's definitely when we not. lose him. polar opposites but uh no but it's crazy it's, he's just we're losing him we're losing him we're losing a soldier oh man it's crazy yeah. and they are the talk of the town <laughs> these kids have been prodigies since they were like 10 years old um i met them through pat and ruka and all that mm-hmm. uh, now it's Nori. and um they were the face of ruka sport and they are the youngest adc world champions i mean we've watched them for the last two days in here and, and I'm directing this towards the audience. When it comes to grappling and jujitsu, I don't think there are two people on planet Earth that understand the game and are as devoted actively right now than him and his brother. By far, hands down. People could talk about Gordon Ryan. People could talk about Gaval, his sensei, and guys like that. But in terms of being active, in terms of being the guys that are willing to step up at any time, at any moment, right now, in today's time, it's him and his brother, hands down. So it's an honor to have you here and an an original Jackson athlete. Thank you. Um, What, you train with Gordon Ramsay? (laughs) <laughs> he said Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> nah, definitely not. No, I don't I don't uh I'm over at Atos with Andre Galval down in San Diego. So that's my headquarters. Have you ever tapped Gordon Ramsay? I I never I trained with him a couple of times in, in Miami back when I was like 16, 17, something like that. I didn't get the sub, but my brother caught him with like pretty clean rolling darts. I know oh, he remembers really? that. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah, from on top. Did he submit? He tapped. He, he tapped. submitted. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Wow. I, I swear it was on footage too, but I never I've never seen that footage. But is the, is that like a is that like a big beef or whatnot? Because it is training or no, or is it like you let it go? No, nah, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. training. You know, you don't really like talk too much about you know how training goes. It's yeah, just training. you you don't tap until normally, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but we do though. We, but I tap. You're on the Jackson podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tap until I don't care. I tap until <laughs> what you tapping? That ass. <laughs> I be tapping that ass. <laughs> hey, we might have to bring him in for a lineup. See what's going on with you in your life. Mm-hmm. So I want to get a rundown off the break of your, your life for the audience that doesn't know the youngest ADCC world champion, you know, he's fighting dudes twice his age the guys putting on a spectacle show, but he's been a prodigy and him and his brother have been in the light for years. The most humble and, and charismatic, I would say grapplers in the game. And I'm not trying to dick ride. What I'm trying to explain to people is that the reason why they're successful is because of their attitude and the respect they have for the game. Why are you being all sus right now? <laughs> Me? Yeah, because you get you get crazy whenever I talk good about people. No, I just just key words you use kind of throws me out. Just staying I, alert. <laughs> yeah, because you know, because I'm from Memphis and it's just I've been living out here for 22 years. I'm still not used to how, how, how the young folks talk out here. <laughs> it's polar opposite. Yeah, yeah full difference. It's for totally sure. different. I'm finishing. Are, are you still living out there right now? No, no, I'm I'm here full time. Full time, and man. I'm still not used to this motherfucking place. <laughs> still not used to. It. He was like, uh, he he he's he been just, living here for 30 years. Dude. 30. Oh, he had more how old years. <laughs> I'm 45 years young. So at least 19 years. Minimum. 22 years. I yeah, there you go. So I'm but, right there. But, but you know, he said with a straight face, I'm not trying to dick ride, but I'm, I'm doing it. Well, you <laughs> always make fun of me. So I was trying to just eliminate the joke off the break because I, okay. I want to get through one sentence without right. one, one, one sexual joke from you. No, no, no. We hear about our, our yeah. great guests. He, he's, he's, I don't make sexual jokes about men. Then why would you tell me, oh, I wish he could wrap a gear around me. I want to see how fast he could do it. Why would you say that before I never, you showed I up? I never said that. You never said <laughs> that? Hold on. Bro. Exactly. We're not doing that gear no yeah, gear. Yeah, we're not yeah, doing that gear no gear going. nonsense. <laughs> you, you know gear, right? Oh, no gi all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't even train with a gi. I, I, I own a gi, yeah. but I don't even know where it's at now. I mean, that was pretty much me for the last couple. I just recently put it on again, recently just did a, uh, a gi super fight. But other than Both that, the super it was, fight it was like a year and a half. Yeah, how how was that gi super fight? It was good. It was good. I won. It was. I didn't get the submission, but it was pretty pretty dominant for the most part. I was just trying to get around the grips. And, yeah. you know, it's, I, I love the gi. I grew up doing the gi, so it's, I, I got a love for it, you know, but... 
I think it's just it's so much easier to fight stronger guys, Nogi. You know, uh, yeah, it's just a totally different sport, huh? Yes, polar opposite. Yeah, it's so so much different. I'm gonna know? tell you what I hate about the gi. I yeah. hate it how that motherfucker keep coming open. You got to stop and tie it back up and do all that shit. I just did it like 20 times. Trust me, I remember, it's the worst. I could never get good at that that whole that whole gi time with the belt the way the Brazilians do it. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool, but I couldn't get it. <laughs> I can't either. You got that specific way. You got to have that red. You know that red belt tie on the left hand side. I still forget that sometimes. Wait, wait, wait. You had a red. You, you know, so you know we be on your black belt or what? What belt? I, your black belt, right? No, I'm, no? I'm blue belt. <laughs> your blue belt. Stop. I'm still blue belt, nah, man. You fucking with me? Not blue no, belt. real black talk. Belt. Come on. I'm blue belt. <coughs> he he was around before the belts. No, I'm, what you trying to say, man? I am buying it. I am. No, no, you real, are like I black belt it. level. No, no, real, no. I, I tested on a Fabiano Iha. He used to fight in UFC yeah, back yeah. in the day. You remember him? Yeah, King of Umbar. Sure. Yeah, you yeah, might, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. You might be too young. How old are you? Uh, 21. God damn. Nah, but I, I did my research. <laughs> yeah. I uh, remember. I, I tested um, for my blue belt, man, years ago. It was over. It's probably over 20 years ago. Uh -huh. And I never with? tested it with, I never tested again. Who was it with? Fabiano Iha. And um, my my test for my blue belt, it was, uh, it was, I don't know if it was traditional uh, jujitsu test, mm -hmm. but um, I remember uh, I was with Fabiano. He he needed help with one of his cars or something. He was buying a car or something like that, and he needed me to drive a car something with him. And I came to the gym with him, and we did the test. And uh, I never tested again after that. It was just you, uh, you passed it. Obviously. I passed it. Yeah. I passed the test. He gave me my blue belt, and I never I never tested again. But I've been told that I'm at least like a purple belt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Come on, bro. I mean, you, if you're able to step in the ring and get out of arm bars and get out of triangles, headlocks and triangles yeah. and rear naked chokes and everything else you've been put in that you were able to escape in live combat like yeah you're I've, testing up i've beat uh i've beat a few black belts in, in fights but i've never i don't think i ever submitted a black belt even in training or nothing like that but I, I have a sneaky uh knee bar knee bar yeah people are surprised For real uh, that i even know jujitsu because I'm gonna be 100. Out of all the arts that I know, jujitsu is my least favorite. Yeah, yeah, I believe that because people can teabag you. <laughs> well, that's more wrestling. I feel like that's that. Yeah. Well, people go to the north. They try yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and they sit south. on your head and yeah, be exactly. balls right there. And oh, that's what. And that's worst. why Bear loves it's it. The worst. <laughs> I saw him. I saw pause. him. Pause. You said pause. Don't do all that. Don't bring. I got to. I got to tell you all the jujitsu guys. Here, I want to hear. I want to hear. I, I've seen him roll with Nicky Rod, and he goes right for that position where Nicky Rod's sitting on his head. It's a tough one. Listen, I'm going to be post, honest. I'm going to post it. It's posted. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. During during uh, COVID is when I started training. I told the boys, I said, yeah. I'm going to try to get a black belt in 12 months. Like BJ Penn, it didn't work out. But I got a, <laughs> but I got a blue belt within two years from Alan Goes. Um, and uh, the boys were like showing me some stuff. And I'm like, oh, damn, who do you guys like? Who do you not like? And they're like, oh, we like everybody. And I, and I was talking to them about Nicky Rod. Do you remember this at the old office? Yeah, yeah, I remember. They were like, yeah, he's nasty. He's on the B team. A good guy. Really nice guy. So I reached out to Nikki and I flew him out here, and that's how Nikki Rod got on the team because the boys like, um, co-signed for him. Uh, I remember the day when I stopped liking jujitsu when I was training with Tito, uh -huh. and, I, and apparently he didn't wear underwear that day. Oh, and you know those shorts that he wears, <laughs> and one of his scrotums was hanging out while he was stop, doing jujitsu. I stop. tapped this true story. I tapped from that. After that, I said, "I'm done with jujitsu." <laughs> that's crazy. And stop. Then, uh, real talk. That's real talk. That's real a real talk. story. That's, that's, I don't know if I'd ever recover from that. I, that might have retired me at that moment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, got, I tapped dude to scrotum. <laughs> who, who does that? Who? You stopped jiu jitsu because you were scarred, not because yeah, yeah, I was. I was like, uh, oh my god, it was, uh, it was slow motion that's, coming towards my foot. You I'm, still I'm not, got nightmares yeah, to this I'm, day. I'm not letting Tito teabag me. No I way. Tapped that. <laughs> I'll be praying. I'll be praying for you. That's, Thank you, brother. That's, that's brutal. See, he understands why mm -hmm. I, I don't fuck with jiu jitsu like that no more. No, I've been doing it my whole life, twenty something, whatever, twenty years, and I, ne never happened. Never, to Never, right? never seen anything. like What that. do you do? You make sure they wear underwear when you grow up. I've been blessed every time I I fought someone. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> never had that happen. I hope it that's never crazy. happens to you, brother. No, that's, yeah, me too. <laughs> so, how do you feel about MMA? I love MMA. I've been falling more and more in love with it every single day. Um, Have you started training in any other arts? Yeah, yeah. I've been striking kind of growing up for, I did like four years of Muay Thai, like off and on, and, and always did a bit of, you know, boxing and striking, but jiu-jitsu was always like our main thing, you know, the way we made a living. So that's just kind of like what we just dedicated most of our time to. But as of the recently, like the last year or so, I've been diving a lot more back into MMA. And then as like the recent last couple of months, it's been like taking up most of my time, so... I've just been following just the, the the fact of like learning something new every day. You know, like I've been doing jujitsu my whole life, so you know I love it. But 
it gets repetitive at times sometimes, you know? So just to, to learn something new every day is just like so refreshing. Has anybody ever tried to put you in a hair bar? <laughs> hair bar? <laughs> you know what's crazy? People try to pull a little click one. No. You, you would think like, yeah, yeah. Like like just, you know, grips where they, my hair is fully caught and they're like still pulling. Stuff, but it just fires me up even more. Like I get, I get heated, you know? Yeah, That's one, gotta hurt. One, That's, time, yeah. <laughs> one time I was training with Herb Dean. Uh-huh. <laughs> Herb's a legend. He's he he got my last match. Actually. Yeah, he's yeah. a legend. Man. And he's, he's a good training partner. Yeah. And I wanted to I wanted to have him help me for Chuck Liddell because he got the same similar style. But we right. was rolling and... And you know he got those dreads. Yep. And one of the dreads came out. I felt really bad. No it came way. out from the roots. Like, you from the roots? Out one of her I didn't try to. I didn't. I didn't pull it what, out. What was it back in the day? You was, was it like Sokoju, right? Was it Sokoju who, uh, yeah, whose dreads came that? out? Yeah. 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 I remember Sokoju. What happened? You remember there? that? Yeah. yeah. What, what happened to Sokoju? He got slammed by uh by who? Who's right? Matt. Was it who's? Was it? What? What? Or no? Hey, yeah, Matt Hughes. Somebody slammed the. I think it's Matt Hughes in the triangle, right? Was that so? No, 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 no. That was, no, that was uh, someone. That, oh, that, that was. Uh, 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 I take that back. That was. Um, that was the other homie with dreads. What's his what's name? What's his name? Uh, uh, we used to be cool. Yeah. Carlos. Carlos. Uh, yeah, yeah. Carlos. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is. It's something like that. Uh, uh, yeah. Newton? Watch this. Newton? Watch this. Carlos. Newton. 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 Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Carlos Newton. Carlos Newton. Carlos. Carl Newton. Thank you. Carlo. We was friends because we just <laughs> fighting pride together. <laughs> Carl Newton. Carlos no, Newton. No way. I think it's Carlos. But yeah, what happened to Sokoju, though? He was tough. And Sokoju, yep. yep. Was, was he a jujitsu guy as well? Uh, oh, he was a stand-up guy. He was just a scrapper, dude. Yeah, just yeah. all around there, no? I forgot about that guy. What happened to that Legend. Guy? I remember a couple of his, uh, Who's it? Tank. I think Tank pulled Tank a couple. Abbott. Tank Abbott. Huntington Beach. HB. Was, well, I didn't think he was a heavyweight. I think he so pulled out some of his dress. I mean, well, back then was there were they even doing weight classes? No, no, no. He wasn't. Was... That, I don't think he was that early in the in the fight game. No, no. I think so was a little later. bit later. Yeah. How did you pull? Up with no, no, we was roll. We was That's rolling. Hurt. No, it, we was rolling. I just noticed that his whole dread was laying on the mat oh. after we got done. So I, I didn't pull it out. Right. But maybe we was just scrapping his did whole. You take it home. That's crazy. No, no, I left it there. <laughs> Hey, don't tell. Herb Looks around. Don't oh, he tell. doesn't know. Herb Dean don't know that you're the one who pulled out the. No, 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 out no. Of his head. I'm sure. He, I'm he sure he remembers. Oh, oh he didn't even God. complain. He didn't uh, even complain, but he left with a few less dreads. Say sorry wow. to him. He's Herb, watching. Herb Dean, I'm, I'm sorry about your dread that was <laughs> left on Antonio McKee's mat all those years ago. <laughs> Why are you making fun of me, bro? It's not like, a face that yeah, bro. What's up with the face? It's like the emoji, like a little sim like yeah. that. Yeah. I got, you know. <laughs> oh, it's, it's okay to be nice every once in a while. No, I like yeah, it. Yeah, I like that side It's of good you, to see that. Yeah, it's good to see that side that it's still in there. You know what I mean? That's good. That's good. As you lose all this weight, it's good to know that something's you know. still wait, wait. All, all, all the doors are still intact. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love We're doing good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. He's talking about doors. No, we painted our doors black, not blue. He sees blue. He goes, wow. Oh, that's what it's it like is. like a bowl. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It's funny because in our house at home here in Huntington, like, we think we got like three or four bedrooms, and every single door has a hole in it from either me or my brother, one of us. Dude. It's just, just raging. It's ah, just, There's just something so about stupid. doors. Man. There's they, something about it. They just piss you off. They, they keep you out. Yes. But it's not as hard as like a solid, it's not concrete yeah. wall, you know? So you know, yeah. you're know you confident you're going to go through it. But yeah. It's, yeah. It's something that gives you a little impact. Exactly. Gives you a little something, makes you the feel The best alive. stress reliever. Yeah. Hey, stress one thing I want to know about stress reliever, you built a compound in Costa Rica. Run yes. me through this. Yeah. Unbelievable compound. Unreal. Yeah. It's been a, a long time. Both my brother and I together, but okay. yeah, it's been, and my dad. So that's three together. But my dad started like 15 years ago, yeah, give or take 15 years ago, starting the house out in Costa Rica. Um, just surfing and fishing and just just paradise, you know? And then uh, you start building the house and then like, it just, you know, shit happened. Life got crazy. It was just kind of hard financially, you know? So it's just pretty much just sitting there for like 15 years, just like rotting away in the jungle. And so finally this past year, we just kind of all put our money and, and attention towards it. And it's finally finished up. So the house is finished. We built the gym, the pool. It's like a whole compound. It's beautiful. It's amazing. In a jungle? It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a rainforest. Yeah, we got to find some photos of it. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You're training. There's like monkeys outside. Like you're literally, you're training on the mats. There's monkeys right there watching. It's crazy. They be watching. Do they start doing something to move? There, there's stuff? a video. Like it's just because we just, it literally just finished, right? So my last trip was our first time on the mats training and shit. And uh, we have a video of my dad because we, we just recently left. And uh, my dad sent me a video of him training afterwards. And there's, he pans, he's, he's rolling and then. It pans outside and there's monkeys literally like right out. I got to try to find the video. There's monkeys right outside on the trees, like literally like almost watching the, the training going down. They like, said monkey see monkey do. So the that? monkeys might be doing some jujitsu when I the time you go back. I mean, when I saw uh, the original photos like two years ago, yeah, 
And these guys were showing me like the mats and the outdoor area and the view and it's all cement, beautiful architecture, looks insane, but it's literally like in the middle of a jungle, right? Yeah, the rainforest pretty much, yeah. And like, is it close to a city or something? So we're in, we're in Marbella. So it's uh, the, the nearest biggest city is like Tamarindo, like 45 minutes away. Wow. But it's super small town vibes, just like it's five minutes from the beach, you know, it's just... It's super just kind of isolated. Is it an Airbnb? Is it a, or a jiu-jitsu resort? Or resort? No, no. So we have the house Retreat? there. So we'll, we'll probably rent out the house. But the, the main goal is just to run jiu-jitsu surf camps. So oh, wow. everything's pretty locked in, yeah. And do you take down like teammates and, and sparring partners and people to kind of roll with? So we just, uh, this last trip, I had a homie, AJ, who flew out with us. We oh, got yeah, some training AJ. and stuff. But yeah, we just finished up everything, right? So it's so fresh, like. We haven't even ran a single camp. Well, there AJ yet, so. Anthony Joshua, the guy that just fought. No, no, no Aga's arm. AJ, the guy Agazar, who fought yeah. Jake Paul. Oh, the guy who fought. Oh, Jake? yeah, I forgot. Yeah, about that. yeah he fought yeah. Jake Paul. He, uh, it was like so, it was like in some Jake gym or something. He, he, what he arm barred him or yeah, something. Yeah, Jake right? was trying to learn MMA, and he fought AJ at a gym. Yeah, I oh, just fought him at a gym. Yeah, it? yeah, it wasn't like a like a sanctioned thing. No. It was like at a and, met and up he, or whatever. And he had beat, a match, and he beat and Jake Paul. He smashed him. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, look at this. So they built these mats. I mean, bro, how big is this? Like 5,000 square feet? Uh, it's bit, I don't even know exactly in square feet. It's, it's dude, man, just the ceilings the are like- the size of our Jackson huge, house. Huge, really? huge Yeah, and it's in the middle of the jungle. Look at that mat. The it's mat, well, how big is that mat? Uh, At least, th it's 30 feet one way for sure. And then, what is the other? Side? At least 50 whatever. feet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it goes from one That's side nice. to the I've never seen solid. a green mat like that too. That's cool. It's cool because like when you see the, the environment, it's all plants and it's like the same color as the mat, you know? So oh. it's kinda, Who built it all for you guys? Um, so this, we have this architect, Joe Martella. Shout out, Joe. He's in, Shout out Joe. Yeah, out in uh, Costa Rica. But uh, yeah, he helped pull out everything together. He's made everything super easy. He just absolutely killed how's it, the, obviously. How's the cost of living over there in Costa Rica? I mean, so the, the cost of living is, it depends how you live, I guess. Kind of like anywhere, right? But yeah. it's cheap for the most part. It's 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 very uh, it's very manageable. And the price of building is, is cheap as well. Wow, this is incredible. So you and your brother built this as kind of like your new compound for training, for... For exactly. What, just just for you guys. For, for ourselves. And then Got also we're, our goal is to do a jiu-jitsu surf camp. So, Because we're always teaching seminars and stuff all over, you know. So I kind of want to be able to bring people to. Oh, like, look at Gordon Ryan. Love. Gordon Ryan left you guys a comment. Looks amazing, guys. Congrats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's a nice guy. He's, yes. Yeah, switching up. Switching up. Switching, <laughs> up, <laughs> switching up. Wow, that he's looks nice incredible. Guy. Look at this. Wood yes, ceiling. It's beautiful Incredible out there. leather trees, seats. Wood ceiling. Trees, cement oh, floors. Dope. Salty. Yo, you guys yeah. killed it. So, how, how, how the ladies look in that, in that city? Because I might go learn some jujitsu with you guys. <laughs> good looking ladies over Costa there. Rica, man. It's, it's, it's the best place in the world. I, I tell people I travel all, every type of climate. You know, yeah. I've been in the desert, snow, tropics. They got and, jet uh, skis over Costa there. Costa Rica is my favorite place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like Yo, that. Yo, Wayne, pull up his last fight where he's in a gi. He's in that blue gi right there. And uh, yeah, it was the IBJF. Just in the gi. Yeah. yeah it's, so it's so how long did you train to get back in the gi? I love the Jackson logo on it, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so I was like, what? Three. I hadn't trained for like a, well, at least probably like a year. So no training year for a half, year. You're like battling that. against... And then I put put the gi back on for like three or four days because it was last minute, super last minute requested. Wow. I thought uh, you couldn't slam in jujitsu. That was a slam. A little bit, a little. You can kind of get away with it. I mean, as long as I didn't like any, you know, front to back like suplexes. Mm. These guys get they get sticky with those grips. He's ranked number five in the gi right now. This kid Natan Schwang, he's really yeah. good, but uh, sticky grips. Schwang came into this already ranked five. What were you ranked coming into this? Because you're the? you're a one champion right now. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't ranked any in the gi. I'm I'm not ranked at all. So how is that possible? Because I haven't competed at black belt in the gi. Oh so, wow! So since my brown belt debut. So my brother and I we, we fought at brown belt worlds finals, and the the winner of brown belt worlds finals goes straight to black belt, like to get the invite to black belt. Wow! And so we fought in the final. You remember that match between yeah. my brother and I? Yeah. And then so we fought in the final, and then it was a crazy match. I was winning the whole fight, and then he ended up armbarring me. So then he went to uh to black belt worlds, and then therefore you know I, I never had points at black belt. You had to fight your brother. I had to fight in my brother. And did y'all went for real? Oh yeah, it was a, it was a full blown. We fought uh, three times before, and it drives me crazy because he got me all three, but the first one. I should have won for sure. It was, you know, my family, everyone says it. The first one is mine. Second one, he caught me with your special knee bar. Wow. Got me with a, a little rampage knee bar. And then uh, the third one, I was killing him the, like the whole match, smashing him, smashing him. And the very end, he catches me in an arm bar. I was like, uh, so that, but it's no bad blood between you and <laughs> nah, your Nah, nah, never, never. It's, so, it's a win win, you know? Yeah. So, all, all the money, everything goes. It's to like the same beating place. yourself. It's like when it's like going against yeah, yourself. Exactly, huh? exactly. You it's, ever beat I mean, yourself? We, we train as hard as we can every day in the gym with cameras and everything. You know what's the difference of doing it? It yeah. feel like you just beat beat thing. yourself. Yeah, exactly. Off. 
No. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I, I tried, tried to. I, 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 there's there's something like, coming. There's something coming. I was trying to cut it off. <laughs> I, <was trying laughs> <to cut> it <laughs> I gotta let him finish this one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that was great. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Every once in a while, it's nice to see you still got it. Uh, but he's like yeah, a he's like real. a bigger Kevin Hart. If Kevin Hart ate a protein shake. This is what it looked like. <laughs> Kevin Hart. Oh, uh, what? I look nothing like. I look nothing like Kevin. My son look like Kevin Hart. You look like Kevin Hart. I don't look nothing like Kevin Hart. Congo look like Kevin. Is your son still doing MMA? I seen that he was training a lot. Man. Yeah, he's doing. He's injured though. He, he uh, you know, what he did. He he signed up for some some jujitsu tournament, and he said he got two, two of the same submissions hurt him. Somebody did a knee blaster or something on both oh, both his knees and, and messed his knees up. Yeah, both his sucks. knees. I gotta go get him stem cells. Yeah, I don't, I don't stem know. cells. Yeah, I don't know. Knees suck. So knees ex suck. explain to me the the concept. You and your brother are training partners coming through the game. So for the people that don't understand the history here. You go through like everybody in no gi. You go through everybody in a gi, and then you decide to go to one championship. You and your brother, but your brother moves up in a weight class, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yep. So Got my it. brother is usually fighting the heavy, the heavier guys. You know, this this time ADCC is coming around this year, obviously, and we've been talking a lot about it because he's always been fighting the heavier guys, the bigger guys. And uh, I was like, we can switch because last year I got the title, ADCC title, you know, and he ended up coming a little short in his division. So I was like, we can switch. I'll do the heavier one. And you do because he can make 170, no problem, you know. So it'd be crazy to see him at 170. Just so you think your brother's gonna come down in a weight class? We might, we might switch, so then I'll go up. Wow, uh, 99. So we've been talking about it. We'll see. We're kind of on the fence. So what's the what's the how are how are the training techniques like? How do you have to like switch that up though? Like, because didn't he have different sparring partners for the last ADCC than you? The, the partners all stay the same. You know, all, all just beast. Everyone's yeah. just. What Gabal exactly? All these, you know, massive units and and everyone's good and everyone's tough. So it's it's more so just uh, I mean, not, not, there's not really a whole lot of changes. Every time we you know our camps are the same. Get our same you know beast training partners. As long as we're working together and, and you know the goal always stays the same: take down, pass, and submit. Do you try to uh, train with guys your same size? Uh yeah, yeah I, I kind of train with everybody. You know, like just I like to train people who can beat me. That's the main thing. You know, like it's it's. That's, you got it pretty much. The, you should be the training with me then. I thought I could beat him. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd what, love what, to. What, what was that face? Bro, this guy went to ADCC and was tossing around dudes that weighed like 230 pounds. Bro, bro, I'm 270. You weighed me today. Bro, you don't want smoke. I'm 272. I love you. That's and I, I tell everybody, you're, my, you're one of my favorite fighters Amazing. of all time, but you don't want smoke with him on the mats. Listen, Jiu -jiu he's 21. This isn't an MMA fight. He's 21 years old. He's going to spin around your head and then reverse darts you, and then Joe Rogan's going to talk about it for a month. I can't, <laughs> I can't let a 21-year-old kid be So what would like you do? That. Kick him? No. I wouldn't cheat like you. I'm not... I got, hey, I got this move. I got a couple moves I made. I, I want to know what... You, how would you strategic... <laughs> yeah, I want to hear. I'm excited. How would you strategically get me down or submit me? I would, I would um, trick you with my, my surprise knee bar. Uh -huh, since your, uh -huh. your brother already submitted you with them. I, I like, yeah, that's I, true. I you got, he already know the weakness. I right. got the weakness. And then I'm, I, got this, I got this move that I made up. I call it the fish gill. The fish gills. Yeah, they were, it was surprise. It won't submit you, uh -huh. but it might, it might submit you if you're a little pussy. <laughs> Yeah, my Gaval. Uh, Gaval's like me, twice hey, your me, size. Let me show, can I show you my I fish? I want to see it. I want to see it. Can I show my fish gills? I'm going to show it on him. Don't hurt me. I'm going to hurt that bitch. Last time he did this, he popped my rib. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't Let take me... the chain off. No, I don't like when you get serious. No, no, no. I was kidding. <laughs> Anything I said earlier, I was just kidding. I call this the fish gill. Hey, I invented a couple of uh, jujitsu defenses. Uh -huh. I'll tell you about that later. I've seen the slam. I've seen don't the slam. Take your head off. Take your head off. Here we go. Fish gear, like go go in like you finna shoot in on me. Don't look, this is the fish gear. Oh my oh. god, submit. Oh my god, what's <laughs> oh that? God. The fish gear. I invented that. Oh my god, uh, you didn't pop the tooth. I didn't pop the tooth. Yeah, look. Damn. <laughs> fish gear. Surprising. I want to see ah, what, uh, one more time. Oh, that's the spot. It's, it's, fish gear in the legal, spot. Not, Let's see it. Is, Wait, legal. I lost weight. Go easy. Right it's actually, yeah. Oh my god, I call it the fish gear. Oh my god. All right, all right. God damn it. The fish. <laughs> oh my god, yo, that hurts. That looks crazy. Oh, try, try it on me. No, I'm not doing it here. Yeah. Did, did you? How's did that you want? Did you want, did you want? You want to feel it? No, hey, honestly, I, hey, honestly, I, no I, lie. 
Can you just see if it's a real thing? No, I can already pussy? tell. That looks like it hurt. I mean, that's going right up in your artery. Yeah, what like... did, hey, bro, I think you popped the blood vessel. No, no, I didn't get you that. I don't even think that's a move. <laughs> it's, it's legal, though, huh? No, it's got to be. I think so. Yeah, yeah no, you mean, Even if it's not, there's no way a ref's going to catch that. Right, they're not going to catch it. It, it, it. I don't think it will submit a lot of people, but it will break. It will break. Um, If they go on. No, you they broke got... a tooth, for sure. No, no, I'm just saying. Right. Redirect that head, kind of like break those, that yeah. shot or whatever. Yeah, if they're going for something. Yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. You like that one? That makes sense. Yeah, I swear I to God, I'm not kidding you when I say this, and I'm not gassing you up. That's like a, a legitimate move. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually heard. No, 100%. I Especially call it, like if you're going single hand chin strap, like a lot of guys can just eat that guillotine, you know? Yeah. So like just, I mean, we saw Dustin Poirier yesterday on Saturday night. He was doing the same thing. And um, oh, I, I, invented, I invented um, a way to get out of the you didn't, triangle. You didn't let go of me when I tapped. So for that, I'm giving you an extra one tonight. Yeah, ring, he, he, he can't he can't hurt know, me in boxing. He tries. He tries. He, he tries. He tries. Hey, but he, he didn't let go of me when I tapped. You're not a good No, 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 no. I don't. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Hey, 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 this ain't no, this ain't no, this ain't no meat meal diddy shit right now, motherfucker. You watch your fucking mouth. Hey, hey. This ain't no meat meal. Hey, this ain't no meat meal diddy shit. He was talking about boxing. He was talking about boxing. He told me he said was saying pause. He get these motherfucking pause. That's how pause. you know he he a weapon. He ain't worried about nothing. He said whatever you want to say when you want to say. It. Yeah, I know, yeah. huh? Hey, look, these hey. little young whippersnappers. Wow, I'm so, I'm like very impressed with you. Yeah, yeah, I know some shit. I just don't tell everybody. I act like I don't know a whole bunch of. Just that's what I'm saying. Well, that, a, you'll hurt someone. That you should use that on Nicky Rod. No, 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 no. No, you should. Now I can get you guys to spar each other. Now I'll. No, set I got to train jujitsu no, for a while. Now I'm going to set it up. Now I'm going to post it and set up a big. No, match no. I, like like I was saying before, he trying to get me to go against all these big, strong heavyweights, dude. Because he keeps talking about how he wants to go against big, strong guys. I go, bro. Like, w like move slowly into it. Like you're, the game is like on a whole different level right now. You're like a world champion, one of the best to ever do it. Get some training in. Run yeah. around the block. Listen to Rocky, then do the no, Tolo Brothers, then do Bouchesha, then do Nikki Rod. Start with them. Oh, like grappling. Yeah, like I said, you, start you, with you them. Want, you, you want to do like matches or not? Nah, nah, Why I don't would think you do so. that? Yeah, you do. Uh, not against jujitsu guys. No, I go against like I, I want to do one against Czech Congo. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that's dope. Yeah, because that's my that's friend. Dope. Like we go against each other. We, yeah, we tr we we grapple and stuff for train. We train with each other for years. Mm -hmm. I think I can take Czech Congo and jujitsu. Yeah, you match. could take him for sure. Yeah, yeah. But he has skinny little. But legs. he's strong as hell though. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, he, you think he's still strong? Unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, you, uh, your strength is. He had that crazy it? fight with uh with Pat Barry. Yeah, yeah. It was that crazy. was one of the greatest. He was just on the podcast. Time. Oh no, he's actually the nicest guy of all time. Oh yeah, Chicago. So yeah. very respectful, super like friendly, and like spent a lot of time like trying. He's to local him. too, right? Doesn't he? Well, no, he, well, he lives in Are Texas you? now. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Did, was he your? Uh, who was your jujitsu? Like, who was your grappling coach? Your wrestling coach when uh, you were training? Uh, I had a few, but um, Antonio McKee. Mm. I had Zach Light. My, my, it's been so long since I fought. I and who? Uh, 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 Coach Paul Herrera. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Hitman. right. I know Coach Paul. Yeah, yeah and HB, yeah. right? Legend. With TK? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you've been with Gaval the whole time? Uh, last like five years. Give and or where take, did you with originally? Galva. I started at a, a small. Do you know Clever Luciano? Yeah. You know Clever? Yeah, yeah. I started with Clever's when I was like, I was like three, before I can remember, like three years old. Mm. And then, uh, he had a, an instructor, Ali, that was under him. And then we ended up Muhammad going, Ali? <laughs> nah, nah. Basically, nah, he was a G, G the Muhammad Ali Jiu-Jitsu almost. Mm -hmm. for, at least for us. You know, he really developed our, our game from a, from that young age of like, we were like four, five, six to like our, you know, our early, you know, Wait, 10. wait, wait, wait. You've been doing Jiu-Jitsu since you was four? It's like three years old, three and a half years, since before I can remember. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I read, if you start a kid at doing whatever whatever you want them to be a genius at before three, they become a genius at it. So yeah. you you started it around that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you a genius at jujitsu? I I, I know jujitsu better than I know English, <laughs> probably for sure. Wow, that's so <laughs> that's, it, yeah. so that's true. Yeah, yeah. But, well, your dad did it, right? My dad, he was like a blue belt at the time when I was three. So he just uh, and I'm pretty much just a clone of my dad in a way. You know, he was like a surfer. Jujitsu guy, we just like pretty much did all the same things as him. And your brother, did he take out your dad or your mom? Same. He's like a replica of my dad too. We're yeah. like pretty, yeah. as much as we hate to admit it, we're pretty much like the same yeah. person. Yeah, you know? a lot of people don't know this, but I'm jealous of twins. My mom's a twin. Oh, no way. Yeah, she got twin brother though. That means, oh, no, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, you, you might have some twins. But... That's, you're supposed to skip a generation, right? Oh, that's right. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I always wanted a twin. I've been trying. Keep trying. Keep I trying probably, more I probably flush them damn twins down. Yeah. <laughs> how, many more, times. how many more twins? You want? How many more kids you want? I, I, I was trying to get some damn twins. I didn't get no damn twins. So you want more kids? 
I ain't scared of kids. I know, but how many more do you want? Like five more. How many kids do you have? Five. You have five. So you want 10. I want 10 it's kids. Like the Brady Bunch. Because you know, once you have 10 kids, you can't, you don't have to pay child support. Oh my God. Is that, is that, that's a loophole. Act Nick, act Nick that's, Cannon. That's what Bob Marley did. So he was at 12. Is that true? Not, <laughs> oh, man. Ask Nick Cannon. Kids. After you got 10 kids, like, they like, you don't got to pay child support. Interesting. That's crazy. Nice tactics. Good to know that you have a strategy with everything I you do. I got a strategy with everything I do. Yeah, that's what, that's how I knew the, the fish gear. Hey, I can't believe that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, did I, I hurt you? He was messing around. No, that's, I could tell already. Like, that, I was like, I wow, hurt. that's going to hurt. Yeah. And But then when I tapped and you didn't let go. I did let it go. Especially get on the other side of that little yeah. chin. That little chin. Bro, you could have yeah. popped yeah, something up, in my head. Up, you get, I didn't do it that hard, man. Yeah, you did. Oh, my bad. No, now I'm going to get I, you. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm going to get you today. I'm not scared of Rocky. He think I still, I want to see. I'm sorry, guys. We need to see the, the, my Rocky. manager, Sean Ward. We need to see my manager in bed. Yeah, so his manager, fight. Sean Ward, is a, There's he's nothing a professional I see boogie more. board. Yeah, he like does boogie boarding and stuff at the <laughs> Palm Beach uh, or Palm Springs Surf Club. He does the wave pools because he used to be a lifeguard at Six Flags. So he did the Raging Waters. You know those wave pools? Now he works for like the biggest surf agency and fight agency in the world called The Family, which. Sheckler and Steve Astafin, bro, and they have Machine Gun Kelly. They have tons of athletes. They have the Rotolo brothers, and he walks in here all the time, thinking like he he's like uh, Arthur or Gotti or something. You gotta like respect he, the boogie boards. I tried that shit one time in Hawaii. I look like a fucking chuckity whale. <laughs> I couldn't even get the damn thing to fucking go. I was all fat and you know rolling poly, <laughs> sitting in the bottom of the ocean. Oh my god! <laughs> so, I tried it. I was with Ram my kids. Rampage goes boogie boarding and the snorkeling with the. <laughs> oh, dude, I can imagine. I couldn't even. I couldn't even get it to move. Ooh, you bro. weren't built uh, for the water, brother. No, I was. No. You, you need a boat. <laughs> oh, this, oh, this oh, I'm gonna introduce you to my fish you need boat. <laughs> I would love to see that training. Yo, uh, what, where are you at with MMA training? I saw some videos of you striking with uh, Perillo and Luke Rockhold. Yeah, yeah. And and Luke always talks about how nasty you are. Gable Stevenson. Uh, our Jackson crew. We have a lot of elite athletes on Jackson, but our like grappling jujitsu athletes are probably some of the best in the world. The Rotolo brothers, Bouchesha, Nikki Rod. Luke Rockhold and Gable Stevenson. It's a pretty yeah. nasty lineup. Unreal. Yeah. yeah, and Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so wild. it's a pretty insane lineup. Yeah. So in terms of you with MMA, uh, update us on that. Yeah, yeah, just been, just put in the work. I think uh, the debut's coming, it's looking like uh, June 4th. Your MMA June debut? June 4th, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, June 4th. Where, where is this coming along. Be? I believe Thailand. I believe Thailand. We're still wow. getting it 100%, you know, and writing and everything, but that's what it's looking like. It was going to be earlier, but I think uh, June 4th is going to be the call. Is, is it going to be on TV? Uh, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, I think. Wow. It's the, the I want to check that out. I want our one championship. I want to check that out. Hey, we might you, go. You wanna, we uh, might go. June 4th? Thailand. Thailand, we're Thailand. rampage. Yeah, we going. Oh, yeah. I can. I think I'm free around June 4th. Uh, no, I might not be. All right, we'll figure it out. Yeah, but yeah, if you yeah. are, we're if going. you are, yeah, yeah, easy, easy. It'll be sick. I'm excited. And is this going to be with one championship? One championships. Yep, okay, so, and right now you hold the belt and your brother holds the belt. Yeah, we both got a submission grappling belt. I got the 170 pound strap and he's got 185. Wow. And do they already have a, an opponent for you lined up? Um, there's a couple. There's there's one guy in the talks. We're going to see how it's going with him. Just trying to weigh out the options. You know, there's a couple more guys. So we'll see. But uh, it's definitely looking like June. Wow. What type of guy would you like to fight if your dream fight? Would you like to fight another jujitsu practitioner? I use the big word. <laughs> or, wait. No, it's good. No, no, no. Why did it tickle you so hard that I use the big word? Though? It's good. We got him that uh, membership hooked on Phonics, so he has unlimited access, so he could do whatever he wants, and now he just keeps bringing out these big words every oh, three Vinny, minutes. Vinny, write this down. This is my last podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take away this all-access membership to hooked on Phonics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I like what that. Type, it's what a type good of... point. Who do you want to fight? Yeah. Um, uh, there's not... Honestly, I don't really care, you know? If, I feel like a fight's a fight, you know, regardless of what style I'm fighting, you know? Um, it doesn't really matter to me. Just a guy, a striker, whatever. See, he a real man. If you yeah. ask me some questions like that, I'd be like, man, give me somebody super old, <laughs> like one leg in a wheelchair. No, in all seriousness, you weren't scared of anybody. No, right? How would not. you look at this if you were him going into this and, if, and you be, you're the, the greatest jujitsu grappling athlete in the world? How oh, would you look at your first MMA fight? Oh yeah, my first MMA fight. Yeah, if I was if I was really good at anything, especially if I was really good at jujitsu, yeah, I'd be like. Yeah, give give me like a um like a, a good stand up guy or somebody who's like real good at something like that or a really good wrestler, somebody that's gonna take me down like right. an idiot. Right, right, right. Yeah. How's your yeah. wrestling? I, I like to in the most humble way possible. I think it's pretty good. You yeah, know, I saw I like your to, double leg and, your, yeah. and you slammed that dude in the yeah, yeah, yeah in the key match. Yeah, when you weren't timing. supposed to be slamming. No, exactly. <laughs> you know I like slam. I like, no, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I love wrestling. I grew up wrestling too. You know, my whole life. So with, with my brother and. 
we'd always dabble at high school wrestling classes and then, you know. Yeah, I love to see him. Highlight. I yeah, love to see him fight like a stand-up guy, something like that. How, how is your stand-up training? How's your striking? How's the camp going? It, it's been coming along for sure. You know, I'm definitely no Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali in the, in the hands yet, but uh, it's been coming along, for, you know, I like to say for pretty fast. Now, I'm definitely comfortable. That's been the main, you know, adjustment. Like, I'm, I'm comfortable on my feet, you know, so. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing. Exactly, you know. I wish Bear would get comfortable on his feet. He's, he's still scared to get punched. I don't like it. You don't like it, huh? Well, he he puts on like 10 ounce gloves. And the last time he hit me, he broke a rib. So it's like, I, I don't know what to do. Well, I mean, camp. yeah, it's sparring a rampage camp. Yeah. yeah, it's like, give me someone normal. <laughs> give me a Sean Ward or a bucket that I could just, yo, <laughs> next. Ward. Like, yeah, give me someone light. I don't, I don't, I don't I go hard against it. He, he, he was a big fan of that, that uh, UFC guy that fought with one boxing gloves on. <laughs> and back in the day, like, when he fought Horace Grace with the one boxing glove. I forgot it. That was his name. Who's that? You 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 know his name because you're a big fan of who? I can't remember Man, his name. Who is this? No, who is he's this? a black guy. Don't he go, fought. Go. He fought in the first UFC before you was born. Don't listen. To this. And he, one glove. One yeah, boxing you, glove. Have you ever watched UFC one? Yo, pull up UFC one. Hoist Gracie versus. You know his name. Nah, I, don't know his name. Don't, don't, don't. I don't know his name. He's acting like he don't What's know his guy. Anyway, one glove. He, yeah, he's he's a big fan of that guy. I'm so not that's a big what, fan, but we, we, so that's what he does. There's he's some coming, sort of joke coming. No, out no, it's not joke. It's, it's no cap. He gets in the ring with me, and he has the one glove on, mm -hmm. and he tries to reenact that fight with him and Horse Grace. <laughs> it's a true story. You didn't you didn't hear about you didn't see this legendary <laughs> no, I fight. I never heard. Yeah, Horse Grace had fought a boxer, and he decided to fight with one glove. Watch. Check look. this out. This is UFC one. You see, so, look. Jimerson thought that he would be able to protect his hand. It wasn't so much for a hoist; it was for him. But Hoist is like, bro, you, you, are you crazy? Like he fought Horse Grace with one boxing glove. Can you see it? Yeah. But what was, so what was the theory behind the one? The that one he glove? could he could use it like how he would in boxing and protect his hand with his jab and keep keep Hoist away. I guess I don't know. It was a weird theory. Hoist has his own theory on why. This guy has his own theory on why. <laughs> Everybody has a theory on why he wore the one glove. And but it's a unique thing to do against a guy who. And Bear is his biggest fan in all MMA. <laughs> Bear comes to the gym dressed like he boy, but he won't let us take no pictures. Wait, I'm real talk. He comes. Rewind just, that last thing. That looked just like Bear right there. Thank was. you. That's how Bear moves. He learned. He learned from that guy. Right there. Right. There. Oh, <laughs> double leg. He does that, that movement. Yeah. Done. That's and that's exactly how Bear does. It. Bear hires this guy to teach him privates behind, like behind the scenes. He won't let none of us take pictures. You know what? They could probably pull the footage off from the security camera. <laughs> Do you, do you really work with him? Yes. Stop. <laughs> Bear loves that guy. Uh, is there someone in, in, in MMA right now that That's you're classic. modeling your game after that you really like or you, you've been watching? Um, That's a great question. Yeah, I mean... My favorite forever has been Nate, Nate Diaz. That's always oh, been my yeah. just. He's the OG. Man. He's just an OG. Doesn't get more OGs than that. I what love you, Nate, man. So Him you love and about Nate. Nate. Yeah. Say again. What do you love about Nate? Just. You know, the first thing just to, just how like just just how stubborn, how ruthless, just like, you know, he could be just absolutely outgunned and then next thing you know, he's coming back. That was always my favorite thing about him, you know. But uh and the fact he's always natural too, that's another big thing. And just like, you know, I'm sure you know, like just, just so much crazy amount of steroids in, in every sport really nowadays, you know. So to have someone like that kind of pioneer staying natural, just kind of just keeping it G, you know, like yeah. he's just one of my favorites, bro. Yeah. Have you so, ever slapped so, somebody like Nate? I, yeah, but not not in jujitsu, nothing like that. But that's I did the combat jujitsu one time too. I was like open hand slaps and stuff. That was oh, for real. Yeah, they got yeah. combat jujitsu. They they do. Yeah, now, they yeah. do. It's kind of it's kind of like what Uriah was doing to Gordon Ryan's I brother. I think Uriah Remember? did a match for him too yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. Uriah's super cool too. Yeah, he's shout out Uriah. <laughs> that was an insane fight. That's one we talked about on the podcast where he's like kind of slapping around. They pay millions of dollars for that. Cause I slap some more millions. Fuckers. I don't think that. No, they're millions. not paying millions. Half a mil, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand depends. You depends on the, depends on the flat uh, the platform. But I mean, you probably good at that for, for slapping sure. motherfuckers. Open hand. I think it's, you could even palm like palm strike. You know, like yeah. that's the better one. Yeah. Mm. Who do you think has the best uh, jujitsu in MMA right now? Mm. It's it's tough to say because you kind of see a lot of this pattern of like super high level jujitsu guys moving to MMA. Mm -hmm. And they kind of it just seems like they almost get like uh, lost in this, or just kind of they, they get drunken and with the, the striking, they almost like kind of just like oh I need I need to start work striking striking striking. You kind of see their jujitsu start fading with time, you know. So every time like you see like it's one of the best jujitsu guys hop into MMA, it looks sharp in the beginning. And then I've noticed like with however many fights that pass, sometimes it, it kind of it just doesn't seem like it. it, it trans, yeah, just you know, like they're working their other tools and they kind of start forgetting about their jujitsu as much and. 
you know, jujitsu, if you're not work training it a lot, it's easy to kind of be rusty and, and you know, to, to really not have those, you know, positions on lock. So it's super tough to say, but man, I think, uh, I mean, Dorino, you, you know, it's tough to say after that last loss, obviously it was a tough loss to watch, to watch but Dorino's mm-hmm. jujitsu, uh, at least on paper too, you know, it's been one of the best forever. Um, I mean, who else, you know, Charles is obviously super sick in jujitsu too. He doesn't always use it. He likes to stand and yeah. bang, you know, but he's All got there. really sick jujitsu. Yep. Um, who else, man? Now, who, who would you guys think? Who, who's some of your favorites in the, in the grappling? Mm. I, I would say, um, surprisingly, John Jones. His yeah, is, you're right. He's actually really good. Jones. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think I would say probably Oliver and Gilbert. Oliver and Gilbert, yeah. yeah. In terms of just like pure technique, like jujitsu technique, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, but then pure. I think a lot, yeah. I think Charles Oliver has probably the most, sub- hey, Vin- Vinny, does he have the most submissions in Right now? Yeah, yeah, I think he has the most submissions too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I think also too, and you guys are a part of this transition, that's this like Gordon Ryan, Nikki Rod, Rotolo, Nogi style jujitsu meets grappling meets American jujitsu, whatever everybody wants to call it. I don't want to get in the middle of that yeah. internet war. <laughs> but like, I do feel like the game's completely evolved. I feel like sure. the way knees and ankles are looked at compared to how people look at side control and like flying arm bars, like the things that are going on now are just like, can't compare. It's two different sports. Right? No, with, without a doubt, hundred yeah. percent. Do yeah. you, do you see um, ankle locks the same way I see like those oblique kicks, or are you or are you game for you like ankle locks, heel hooks, and all? Like the whole thing with ankle locks is that we, had, me, and my brother and I, we had to learn how to defend them first. So we never really like attacking them, but it was just we had to learn them just because you know it was just such a big part of jujitsu. You know, we, we, our whole lives we did everything but leg locks pretty much. So our whole you know everything top, bottom, wrestling, everything felt sharp, but except for leg locks. And then it was obviously just our two biggest holes. So it was like, we were like 15, 16 years old. We did those ADCC trials and we both got our legs broken with some leg locks. And it was like a year straight. We we're just every day working on them. So, you know, now we're super comfortable with them. You know, like I'll attack them here and it won me ADCC last year, you know, so I can't say I don't like them. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, it's, I don't, I'm not looking for them. I'm not going for them, you know? Yeah. I, I'm always a little, worried. A little Jocko feel for Oh, you. thank you, Don. Let's go. I was, I'm always worried. I'm always worried about, um, about them uh, what's the best way to defend an ankle lock is it to put your foot in their butt and just kick them off yeah that's the best one huh? long story short just do it just keep <laughs> grimy just, keep, just make it uncomfortable now there's there's some little secrets some tricks sometimes going into the leg lock is better than actually exiting because a lot of the times when you're exiting that's when it makes it tighter you know so it's weird little little like like kicking that, yeah. into the body yeah like wow. kicking deeper into the leg that's crazy i didn't yeah. i would never even think of it. that's yeah yeah one thing, and like from a guy who's not obviously good at jujitsu, I, I have a blue belt, so me and Rampage are probably in the same boat. But uh, for for one thing that, uh, in terms of like how you study technique, like Boss Rune said, he used to write things down. Khalil Roundtree just said that earlier. They write things down. They like write down technique. Like, mm-hmm. do you write down jujitsu technique? Like, do you write down moves? Bro, he's yeah, a genius. He's been doing three like, years old. He like, don't got to write down shit. He's like little, He's like the Lil Wayne of motherfucking <laughs> jiu-jitsu. He does freestyle that shit. Just that's locked true. up. Just locked that's up true. in there. Yeah, I don't really write too much down, to be honest. I don't know. That's true. Bro, he, he is stuck. a... Bro, he's been doing since he was three years old. He's a fucking genius at it. You know, some people have like a photographic memory. You know, like like I definitely don't have that. But when it comes up to jiu-jitsu, I do, for whatever reason. Like, I could just see a technique and just remember it forever. See, look, he just learned a fish gill. He's going to use it one day. Oh, 100%. Yeah. My, my, I'm literally touching my throat because I can't breathe. Like, I think he broke an esophagus. Pause. <laughs> called, hey, <laughs> yo. What is this Pause. Pause. Where is the esophagus? Hey. Where is the esophagus? Hey, is yo. Right here? Hey, yeah. yo. He knew how to, like, check for I, I never had a dude tell me that. Hey, he yo. No, this is, so this is how you be checking, huh? You do all this weird if stuff. If you come out to my fight in Thailand, you just, just got to do that check. No, no, I don't even, I don't even need that. I don't even, if, hey, I don't even need that. My thing is, if it's a little doubt in my mind, it's a, it's a bit like, ah, is it, yeah. Nah, 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 I'm teach y'all young folks. Listen, I'm teach y'all young folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give him too much No, 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 no. I don't give a fuck how much I drink. Look, I'm teach y'all something. Young folks, young folks. If a girl has plastic surgery. And you just meet her in a nightclub, something like that. Get to know her if you like that plastic surgery shit. But for me, if a girl got plastic surgery, and I can tell she got plastic surgery, it's a wrap. I don't fuck over with that. it. Over it, because a lot of these girls be getting these plastic surgery, and they don't even know it. They friend because girls are not honest with each other, right? Yeah. They don't even know it. They be looking like Decepticons. <laughs> Transformers. 
more than meets the eye. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're going to move on. <laughs> Where's the lie? 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 Where's the me, I just, I just like natural looking women anyway. I don't and, even. And and he likes, hey, it's, he likes you have it, a preference. whatever okay. way you go or whatever things you do. He likes you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he likes I, a lot I, of them I, when he travels. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that's not a cat. That's uh, a cat. That's a hundred. That's for the cat. Yeah, I heard a crazy story of him in Shibuya in Japan with a bunch of robots. I go rampage. That's too much. I'll see you when you get home. <laughs> robots. <laughs> yeah, robots in Shibuya in the I just want, robot district. I just so. wanted to say, Domo uh, arigato, Mister Robato. Arigato azimasu. Nihongo henasu. See, ni hongo henasu de. Ohio gazima. Ohio gazaimas. Gazimas, yeah. Ohio gazaimas. I was just there three weeks ago. If I wasn't there three weeks ago, I had nothing for you. Uh, I actually did. You speak Japanese? No way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I you, you speak got a little game. Japanese. I, I, I used to fuck you Japanese bitch. I mean, I used to <laughs> fight there. <laughs> I was gonna say you fought there a lot. <laughs> I fought there a lot. I really, I really, okay. I, one thing about me, some people probably make fun of this, but I, I, I feel like I'm a chameleon, and I <laughs> continue. That just thinking I'm chameleonary, yeah, dude. Uh, riding dirty, I could see you singing that song while you're going through Newport Beach. I'm a chameleon. I feel, I feel like <laughs> when I go to a, a certain culture, a certain place, I want to learn as much about the place, wow. and and and, and and and. The more interested I am in the place, the more I try to learn. So yeah. I spent a lot of time in Japan and the UK. I hung around like the um Scousers, the people from Liverpool. Yeah, I love Liverpool. Yeah. That's Liverpool. The yeah. Scousers. Like, yeah, yeah. It's a raw, a raw yeah. group of people. They're right the there. niggas of England. For exactly. Real. For real. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're dirty like, over there. So they dirty I, love, I love Liverpool. You gotta be careful. Yeah. My, I think it's my favorite city in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You gotta be careful with them. I got robbed by millions out of one. No, no way. Hell yeah. Be careful I with them Scousers, though. Oh yeah, they're scrappers over there. Yeah, yeah, they scrappers. You know what? Uh, a meatball Molly from, from the UFC, like Patty the Pam. Yeah, 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 he's with that girl always. Meet, a meatball Molly yeah. is her name. Uh-huh. She's super cool. Why she called Meatball Molly? Ah, that's just her nickname. I think she, she yeah. rocks. Does she it. look she like a meatball? No. She, does she, no. Does she do Molly? No. 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 Why, why? Her, I think her her name's Molly. Uh, Remind me her last name, Molly. Molly. I know who you're about. Yeah, it's Patty, yeah. Patty, it's Patty, Patty the Bamba or Patty the, the Batty homegirl. You, are you cool with Patty the Batty? I, I don't know him personally, but he's chill. He's, I mean, I got respect for I him. I like Patty. Sure. I was on his podcast once, but I forgot to ask him, did he know that Batty means a hot chick, though? That's, yeah, Patty the Batty. Did, yeah, he, know, did mean, he know that when he chose that nickname? <sighs> but you know, Batty means something different over there, so. It's got to. It's, it's got to. It probably translates differently. It does, does Batty go for a guy, too? Can a guy be a Batty? No, it's just on the women, huh? Oh, maybe it's something. The girls are over there like, nah. mm-hmm. what, you know, what do you, what, are, what does a girl call a guy if a guy's looking good? Like if we call girls baddies, what do girls call guys? Oh, oh damn! We don't oh, get nothing yeah, special. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it, yeah. guys can be baddies yeah, now. Yeah, Fuck yeah. it, yeah. come on, guys yeah. can be baddies now. They're yeah, good-looking yeah. guys. Yeah. Women don't give us yeah. shit. We got they, no nicknames. They got no nickname. Look, you know, I thought spicy something was gonna come. Yeah, yeah. come on. <laughs> what, do you, what do you call Rampage at home? What do you call him at home? Yeah, nigger D. <laughs> what? <laughs> You don't have like any nicknames, like you don't nothing like that. Listen, listen, let's move on. Nothing, because he's going to get me in trouble. I got too many bitches for this. Why? All my bitches watch this podcast. <laughs> well, I don't know. You you named Shannon Briggs Milk Dud, so I was trying to figure out <laughs> that everything. motherfucker looked like a Milk Dud Whoa. though. Yeah, I was. He like to a mold. He like a molded Milk Dud with that. <laughs> Ooh, Those talk. milk does be getting stuck in your teeth yeah, like bro. crazy. Yeah, hey, right. hey, that's why you can't, can't be meeting the Shannon Briggs. Man, fuck that you old ugly motherfucker, him. man. <laughs> that man, he stayed photoshopping my face open fat. Yeah, I, I think one of those photos is real. Um, so it's looking for that guilt choke again. Yeah, I was like, guilt choke. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get you um, back for that. I was fish happening, fish fish I was fish happening fish and you never let me out of the fish stick. Dude. No, the fish stick. <laughs> no, you never let me out. I, I, I would I never do that to you, bro. I was showing the boss. Yeah, he is the boss, but he don't need to see, to see that. Now he, I know it though. It's he has respect in his dojo. That means let go. Remember I did, what Hoist Gracie did, did I, the shamra? I did. Let, I did let go though. No, you did not. Vinny, did I let it go? At some point, he stuck his finger in my throat and then was wiggling it around looking for something. <laughs> did it hurt? What? Did it hurt you for real? No. I'm. I'm finna say. If it did, I'll let you do it back to me if it hurt you. No, I'm gonna get you tonight. 
Pause. Pause. Real good. <laughs> that's what you call him? That's wow, you know. that's crazy. That's what she calls you. Hoggin Dogs. I would have never guessed that that was your nickname. Yeah, yeah. She called it Hoggin Dogs. Hoggin Dogs. get this Hoggin Dogs. He said Hoggin Dogs. Hoggin Dogs. He always wants to talk about his Hoggin. No, no, no. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you always talk about mm, yesterday he was so walking around this place. Look at Let me just show you before we move on to the next question. Let's see it. Uh, you been there? No, no, no. What do you mean? I just want to show everybody because this is what this is what they need to see. Look at no, no. He took a picture of me while I was changing clothes. No, no, no. This is what he was doing. He was modeling. Can I put this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta put this on the podcast. You better not Yo, put it on the podcast. Can I? Can no, I? No, no. <laughs> yes or no. I was changing clothes and somebody was asking me something Be while honest. I was changing clothes. Oh, Can I put no. this? He needs to know right now. Can I put this on yes or no? No. All right, Wayne, don't put it in the photo, but I'm gonna show. Look at that. That's what he was doing. He was walking around like that. Same, these are the That's same hectic. shorts that Frank Shamrock wore in Pride. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, bye. So listen, as we get ready to do this and, and, and move on to watching you take over the MMA world, one thing I want to know, a lot of people on our Discord were talking about questions to ask you. Me and Rampage went live on the Discord. What's wrong? Brother, what's wrong? You right? What's wrong? This guy's always freaking out. What, what do you need? You need something? Stressing. Yeah. You want a discount to FUBU.com? What you need? This guy's always wanting something right man, ask, now, right? ask, ask your question Don't to the guest. Don't freak man. out right now, dude. That was, that was rude. You showing him. Uh, he took a candid picture of me changing clothes. <laughs> dude, He's not recovering. He's hurt. Yeah, let me, I got a video, too. It's pretty good. Look at this one. Hey, look at this video. <laughs> if, you put, if you put a little bad boy print on video. there, that would have looked like Just the Shogun shorts. Video. That's for the extended scenes. Man. <laughs> we have the footage. That's bad. Yeah, it's bad. It's like show, Shogun short. Oh, it's shorter than Shogun Troy. Yeah. It's like you take Shogun Troy and then you mix a little Vanderlei and then you add yes. a little Frank no, Shamrock. It's like, oh, the Frank. Yeah, and, and then you yeah. mix no, all like, those together and then yeah. you go straight it's to like, WWE. It's like Heath Herring short. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> there you go. Remember. Me and Heath Herring used to be really good friends. Mm. Then one time I commentated on his fights and he was wearing those little, those little shorts and he was fighting. <laughs> and when his butt cheeks hung out. I was commentating. Yeah. And that was like a already, you know, mm. set up for disaster for me. You know how I am. You're live. Yeah. You're commentating. Yeah. And what you said? You couldn't you I said comment? somebody's butt cheeks. <laughs> Disaster. And he, 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 what a legend. He, he heard about it and then he came uh, and came. He saw me in a lobby in a hotel yeah. and he picked me up from behind and slammed me on the desk and broke the desk in Japan. No way. He was that heated by it. He him. was that heated by it. Then he never been my friend no more. Wow. And I, I never crazy. I never saw Heath Heron again. And I, I feel bad that I made fun of his. How big was he? He picked you up and sat you on a desk? He turned twice my size. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. How, how tall would you say he is, honestly? I think he's like at least uh, six three, six four. But listen, guess what? He got a little brother that's bigger than him, twice his size. He fight too? No, he never fought. But he can drink his ass off. We were drinking. <laughs> we were drinking in Japan and one then time. He fights. <laughs> his, his, his little brother, his, his younger brother, big as fuck. Yeah. And I'm drunk, and I didn't know. I didn't know any better. He had like a big cowboy head on. Yeah. And I grabbed his cowboy head. And I was to put it on. He said, "Don't do that." I'm like, "Why? Well, I want to be a cowboy." He said, "That means we're dating." I went like this. Oh. <laughs> put his head right yeah. back on his head. <laughs> There you, no idea. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's crazy. I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So wow. in, in our Discord, when That's we go crazy. live, um, a lot of the people on the Jackson podcast, a lot of the community, we just hit 100,000 subscribers. We're growing quick. They, they wanted to know, in MMA, and this is a question for you, and just be honest, is in the UFC, in MMA specifically, a lot of people have black belts. And a lot of these people have black belts from certain lineages, but it seems like the minute people go to the floor... Some people just don't have the same credentials of what you would expect a black belt to have. Yeah. Guard control, they're slipping through guard side control, all these things. We, we were really going through a bunch of different variations. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that not all black belts are created equal? Is that like an actual thing? Like, are we at the point now in America where there's so many black belts it's becoming watered down? Gu guaranteed. I think, too, a lot of uh, what you see in the UFC, too, is like, you know, certain uh, jiu-jitsu coaches, let's say they have a high-level, you know, UFC fighter, amazing striker or whatever. And they're, and they're getting the job done with their hands and they're getting the results done in the cage, but they're not really using their jiu-jitsu. So, you know, on paper, they're getting the wins, they're getting the results, but they're not even really using their jiu-jitsu in the octagon. And and I, it's just kind of like, it's kind of hard to say, you know, it's like they they kind of get to a point where, you know, they're not using jiu-jitsu, not using jiu-jitsu, not using jiu-jitsu. And then uh, I just, they just never really use jiu-jitsu. And it's just their black belt, right? They, their coach is giving, oh, you're winning, you're winning. Yeah. Here's your purple, here's your brown belt. Here's your black belt. They never really use their jujitsu, you know. So then, when you actually see them put, get put in a scenario where you know jujitsu is involved, uh, sometimes it's you know you may be a black belt on, on actually, but you're just the level isn't you know it's just not there. Um, 
But yeah, it's hard to say because you see the, the way, other way around too. You know, there's like, you know, Russians or what, blue belts or whatever, just mm-hmm. choking everybody, right? You know, so there's kind of like a flip 22, you know, catch 22 to that, you know. Can, can I buy a black belt from you? Can I, can I be a black belt <laughs> above you? Just that, that's, that's the craziest thing that you see nowadays. You can almost, you know, buy buy belts. You know? those, just like those Mickey Mouse, like those McDonald's jiu-jitsu gyms out there that are like, oh, you train for 60 days and you'll become a, a white belt with four stripes and you train for 90, oh, you'll yeah. be your blue belt. And you're like, so like what? Yeah, How I want to be a be black a belt one day. You you could go train for two years at a gym consistently. They'd move you up so quick. I mean, you you've been so? doing this two your whole years. life and you're a world champion. Yeah, I would I say should, so, I right? Should do, I should be a black belt. Isn't that like... A, oh, for sure. I mean, just, just being, you know, your name. And there's a lot of gyms that'll just... Go to AOJ. No, I want to I earn it. But you want to earn it. Yeah, exactly. with the Mendes I'll pay for, for it, two though. years. It's across the street. You'll pay for what? The classes or the belt? Both. No, we'll get you a... We'll get. Wait, can you give a black belt because you have a black belt? I think I need... um. I think I need like another stripe. I need one more stripe on my black belt to give black belts. Even though you're like the greatest. I can give like every other belt besides a black belt. Oh, got it. Yeah. So we we need to have you here once a week training rampage on the mats. And then we'll <laughs> we'll move you up through the ranks. What <clears throat> uh were you just talking about fighters that get their black belt after the fight? Yeah. What, what you just talking yeah. about? Was do that do that make you is that cringe to you? No, I think it's it could be cool, especially if they use their jujitsu in the fight. If you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it just goes and knocks the guy out, and you hand him a black belt after the fight. It's like you know, let let him get his moment yeah. a little bit. You know, but, but I think that's mainly after like uh, jujitsu tournaments. So I see a lot of yeah. guys getting like their new belts on the podium. Yeah, right? yeah, Is that that's a thing? chill. That's cool. Yeah, that's you see cool. that a lot. But after cool. the fight, it's kind of after. I feel like that's different. You know what I mean? Like it's one thing if you went, you choke the guy as like main event. When we, you know, like you use the jujitsu, like all right, cool, you give it to him. That's you know, jujitsu won him the match. But I feel like if jujitsu didn't win you the fight, then. You shouldn't really get promoted after. Yeah. You know, I could wait. Yeah, That's a good way to look at it. Right? Point, what what is the what is the theory behind like these athletes that are like brown belts, purple belts, moving up and then getting belted, like getting their new belt like on podium on stand? I think um, I think just it, it just feels better. You just glorify the moment. You just yeah. put all the hard work in. You know what I mean? To say your brown belt or brown belt worlds. You know, you make it to the number one, you know, podium on the podium, and it's just like. To, to, to get that belt in front of everybody, it just feels a little different. It feels a little better sometimes. What you know? if my, my first boxing match and I go and I knock out a boxer, would I get a, a purple belt? What does that have to do with jujitsu? Exactly. I, I just want to move up in my belts. <laughs> Probably no, but there's, like I said, there's gyms out there that like, yeah, you, know what? You, 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 you won, do, right? All right, here, boom. I want to be a black belt under you because by the time I get my, my, by the time I make it to my black belt, you already have your stripe. So That's true. If I knock That's somebody true. out in boxing, can I get a purple belt? <laughs> That no. I, that's, can't translate. Oh, okay. I'd love to, but I, I don't think I could. He's to code. He's to code. He's got honor. Code. Oh, Wait, so how code. does that work? All honesty, I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to be funny. How does it work? If I'm a blue belt and I wanted to train with you, I'm not asking like for me personally. I just yeah. want to see the landscape. Mm-hmm. Like I actually have to go through your training or is there a training that you have like from Gaval or Atos that tells you exactly what it takes for me? Like how does that even work? Yeah, I think you know every coach is different, you know, and they're gonna you know require different things from from different students, you know. So it'd kind of be like whatever I feel like. Once I felt like you were deserving of the belt, then then it'd be time. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah, every every you know that's the thing. That's why it gets so kind of whitewashed because every coach has different expectations or different you know you know needs from their their students. So yeah, you kind of just get super whitewashed there. That's why it's important where you're right. training. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, I feel like the whole jujitsu community, everybody kind of goes off their own thing now. And then yeah. no one even knows what to say anymore. Is it jujitsu? Is it grappling? Is it wrestling? Is it American jujitsu? Exactly. What, what do you classify of... yourself as? So me, that, that's been my whole, this year has kind of been my whole thing. Like at the beginning of this year, I had this whole like realization, like what do I kind of want to be known for at the, end of, at the end of my career, my legacy, right? And so for me, that was like the, the hardest thing figuring out this year because obviously, you know, done jujitsu my whole life, you know, mostly, uh, you know, gi growing up and now no gi the last four years professionally. Um, you know, I love jujitsu, but I just feel like I have so much more fight in me to give out there. You know, like I feel like there's so many rules and 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 different, you know, different rules in jujitsu that just makes me fight within all these different. And I just like I have so much more fight to give. You know, that's why I'm obviously moving to MMA and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I love jujitsu. I, th- I think jujitsu is it's, I'll train it for the rest of my life, you know, but I want to be known as like one of the, the greatest, you know, martial art practitioners. And, you, and to do that, you got to do jujitsu, you know, striking, obviously wrestling, we use judo, the same big word. So I don't see, see. Yeah, you locked in. No, but that's been your vibe too lately off camera. You've been telling everybody like, regardless of the outcome, you want to do a Muay Thai fight. You want to do a boxing fight. You want to mm-hmm. do a jujitsu fight. You've yeah. been saying that lately. Yeah. Boxing is the only thing that I haven't done yet. That's why I want to do it yeah. before I get too a old. A boxing fight. That's so, so sick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's a true martial artist right there. Someone that could do it all. Yeah. You that's know, good, man. Yeah. I'm, so I'm proud of him. 
wanted to go to MMA because the other uh, jiu-jitsu practitioners that we've had on the show, they don't want to go into MMA. I feel like they're kind of scared a little bit. But he ain't scared of nothing. They're not scared. They're just honed in. They're not at his level. They're not ADC C world champions. They're, they haven't Ooh, done it all. Nicky, Nicky Rod. No, Nicky Rod's phenomenal. But, but he didn't but, want to go to uh, MMA, no, which but, I but think is a waste let, of talent. Let, let's state the record and let's be clear about this. Nicky Rod is one of the best in the world right now. Top five, hands down. But this dude is a world champion in one, holds the strap, is the youngest ADCC world champion ever. He's done everything there is to prove at this level. And at this point, he's at the top of the hill. All that's going to happen is everybody's gutting for him, and he's only 21 years old. Okay, and what about Nicky Rod's, um, what's his guy, his coach with the, with the gay shirt? And Craig, Craig Jones. Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about him? He didn't want to go into MMA. Yeah, but that's because these guys, like Craig Jones is, is a jujitsu practitioner who also coaches Volk and coaches people and does seminars, and their business model and their life is set up around jujitsu. This guy is 21 years old and can do whatever he wants with his life and still be one of the most successful combat athletes of all time. Mm. So I think that it's a different route. That makes sense. I don't want to speak for you. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He's speaking for you. I don't want to speak, speak for him. you, but I'm speaking for you now. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of different types of jiu-jitsu, you know, practitioners. It's crazy that we're kind of talking about this right now, too, because I was just recently, I was just in Dallas and was talking to this Brazilian fellow. I'm forgetting his name, but uh, he was really good friends with Leandro Lowe, the, the jiu-jitsu legend that passed away. Yeah. Um, dramatically. is like one of jiu-jitsu's biggest losses. But uh, his friend, remember? Yeah, his Bush oh, yeah. 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 he, right? he was murdered. Yeah, Brazil. recently. recently? Yeah. Semi-recently yeah. uh, out, out in Brazil. Last year. Oh, yeah. Last year, yeah, super, super unfortunate. Sad, you know, the whole jiu-jitsu community was just kind of in shock from it. But uh, yeah, uh, anyways, he was sitting with this guy I was just talking to this last weekend and he was saying that uh, he was watching my brother and I compete, Leandro Lowe and him, they're sitting together and he pointed to, to us. I, he, I just told this, it kind of like made my whole weekend, man. It was like, put a huge smile on my face. He said, Leandro was talking about us. He pointed to us and he said that, uh, you know, there's jujitsu practitioners, there's guys who do jujitsu and then there's also like jujitsu fighters. And, you know, those are guys who aren't really fighting for the rules, who are really trying to bring the, who are really looking for the kill, really trying to win from the start to the end, you know? And he pointed to my brother and I, he's like, those guys are jujitsu fighters. You know, there's a difference between guys that are actually really trying to, to get, you know, to get the kill or just kind of, you know, win by points, you know, win by strategy. And and so that's, you know, and I, the only reason why is because my brother, you know, it's the only way we can, you know, or growing up, we just did this our entire lives. And it wasn't just jujitsu. We were just trying to kill each other every day. You know what I mean? It's, it's healthy so, competition. So, healthy competition, you know, like, and I mean, how, the amount of fist fights just no, just, we, we probably we created bare knuckle, <laughs> you know, just at home, just at home, just nonstop, just scraps, you know? So it really toughened us up like a lot. And I think that's why, this transition to MMA has been so much easier uh, for us than, than a lot of jiu-jitsu guys because we just were never really scared to get hit. Like, I, I like getting hit, you know? Like, the harder I get hit, the the more I want, you know? So it's like... Bro, he he, he has a point there because uh, I grew up fighting with my cousin. I had a cousin that's six months younger than me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he passed away a couple years ago. Oh, sorry uh, through, uh, Yeah, it's unfortunate through, a, um, you know, my family on construction. It was like a construction accident. Mm. But um, my mom told me that... Um, me and him been fighting each other since we was in Pampers. And, right. we, and and I grew up in my memory, I remember fighting him every day. Every day. It just make you better. It's made me a better fighter as as because I grew up fighting in the street. I used Absolutely. to fight people for him because he used to get bullied. Exactly. And I don't understand why he didn't turn to a great fighter. Right. Because he was fighting yeah, me. Was fighting you. He only beat me up one time. <laughs> and I never admitted it to after he passed away. Right. That's amazing. That's yeah. so that's a crazy story. That's yeah. an amazing story. That's no, good. yeah, that it really does. You need that to it, it, the amount of my brother toughing me up and vice versa, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Who won most of the fights though, you or your brother? It was, that's the reason why I think we're so tough. Now. It was so even, like every single day we're switching. I remember this one though, like it was my brother's first girlfriend. He, he just started dating this chick and like, I was just talking so much shit, talking so much shit. Cause you know, he spent a lot of time with her and I, I just wasn't used to it. You know, I was just like, dude, where's my bro at? So I just constantly talking shit constantly. And I said something that just lit a fire and I just seen the, I've never seen that look in his eyes before. And he started chasing me, right? So I'm like, I'm kind of laughing, you know. I'm like trying to, like, boom. We make our way into the into the bedroom, and he corners me, right? So like, boom. It does a huge overhand, right? I curl up, takes me down, and he he just goes straight to like, to, I don't even know how he got there that quick. Straight to my throat. I'm posted up like against the wall like this, and I'm like trying to break his grip, and he just like like I've never like Darth Vader the Force grip like as strong as it gets. And I'm like seeing the light. Like, <laughs> he's trying to kill I'm like you. literally tap. I'm like, I'm tapping, but he's not letting go. So then I'm just like trying to pry his fingers out. I was like, we, you know, we grew up doing that all the time. <laughs> he man. Trying, to so he trying to kill you. So often. I remember day we go, there was one time we went down to the beach. We we're just so heated at each other. Let's fight. We we're gonna go out and do it in the front yard, but all of my neighbors are around and they would, you know, they would have called and just would have been hectic. So I go, 
we're going to the beach because we lived like right one street over right there. Like this is semi, this is a couple years ago, like two years ago. And so we just got, hop in the car and we're just talking shit to each other. I'm gonna kill you right now. Yeah, I'm gonna kill you. You know, he's like, yeah, we pull up to the beach, just like at least probably 30 minutes of just boxing, bare knuckle, where we were both like fat lips and everything, just and there was like rocks around. It's not even like all sand too. It's like a little rocky beach. It's uh. kind of sketchy. Oh, it's just so many wars like that, you know, just growing up, just toughen us up. For yeah, sure. man, great, great, dude. That's why they're that's why they're dominating yeah. grown men at their age. That's why they're the youngest champions. That's why they're doing the things they do. Explain to us the the one championship. I heard Sage was pulling out from a fight, and you or your brother walked into the office and said, "Give us the MMA fight after we win our belt." Is this true? Yeah, yeah, c- kind of. So yeah, so it was um, yeah, Sage had pulled out of that match last up because his his cornerman wasn't able to make it, or it's some visa problem, so his cornerman couldn't coach. I think I think Uriah could still coach him, but his, his jiu-jitsu coach and he was fighting Shin Yaoki, so you really wanted his jiu-jitsu coach there, obviously. And then uh so he just felt like he didn't have the team that he needed there to perform. So he ended up pulling out and then uh yeah, I hopped in or I offered to off uh, hop in last minute. I just went up to Chot Street because I knew that he was just super excited for that fight and then it went through. He was kind of just frantic and I told him like I'll 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 accept the match. Like I'll fight uh who was it, Shinya. I'll fight Shinya, especially knowing that Shinya his base is jujitsu. You know, yeah. he's got his jujitsu base. So I was like, you know, he's not going to submit me. He's not going to do anything like that. And I believe I can outstrike him for sure. So I was like, I'll take the fight and then I'll, I'll just fight my my jujitsu match afterwards. Because, or, or, soldier, boss, fight my jujitsu match first and do that one after. I was like, you know, either, either way, just, I just, I was just confident. You know, I just felt like I could have got the job done and still done my jujitsu. Who, who turned match. it down though? The guy, the, the Chaucer, he said he was thinking about doing it for a split second. And then uh, John Lineker, he's like a smaller guy, but he's he's scrapper. And uh, they threw John in last minute instead. And he was thinking about doing me, he said, and she's like, for a split second, I thought about it. But because I had that, it was the title defense for grappling and he just didn't want to mess with anything. So John was down and they ended up running the John match. But I was like, I was ready wow. for it, man. I was like, I started shadow boxing. I really thought it was on. I was in the back to shadow box. I'm like, all right, sick, let's go. Did you get the nerves? I got excited. I didn't get nervous. I got excited. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about it uh, the next day. Not even from your team. Not Sean. So Sean Ward's his manager for him and his brother, and he's an amazing manager, great person, always looking out for the boys. Yeah. And when I was first looking to bring on athletes for Jackson, you had just come. We were talking about different things, and Sean's like, dude, the kids are perfect for that. And I had met him through Pat and Ruka. And I remember when I met them, like for the first time for business, like you could just tell how honest they are, right? Like they're very real. They're very, There's no bluffing with these kids so like if he says he's gonna go fight like Chachri's like i better not tell him yes because he's gonna go out there and fight this guy obviously it's not the best move either because that's a big super fight you don't want to waste on something like that right and you're gonna make the bread in the bag by having a proper organizational rollout on that this yeah. isn't scrapping your brother in the front yard exactly so i'm glad you didn't do it but the fact that i heard and i didn't even hear it from sean ward i heard from other people at the event yo one of your boys just offered to go fight and i'm like Aoki, the dude that Shinya, what was his name? Shinya Aoki? Shinya, yeah. yeah. I was like, no way. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, wow. He's All related right. to the DJ? <laughs> Aoki, Aoki, no, basically. He ain't, <laughs> it ain't Steve Aoki, brother. Oh, okay. This is the one fighter. Shinya. I know, yeah. he's probably related. He's a legend. Shinya's a legend. He's one Japanese? Thing, uh, yeah. yeah. He, fought, he fought in the UFC he for a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he is related yeah. to the DJ. He is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. No. Is he really? Yeah. You gotta fact check that one with him. Yeah, no, we gotta fact check that. We gotta keep going out there. Yeah. 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 Why are we talking about famous people? How honored are you that they put you in the Simpsons as a character? <laughs> Sasho, Sasho Bob. Sasho Bob. How, how it's been my that in high school musical has been my two. Corbin my two, Blue? Probably my two. Yeah, biggest. I can't believe the Corbin Blue one because that one's out of nowhere, but, but it's I've true. That so many it's true. Times. You look like probably, if Blue. I got a dollar for every time I heard Corbin Blue, I'd be rich. Yeah. It does look like Corbin Blue. Who do you think Rampage looked like? Rampage. Thank I you. Don't think there's See anyone that looks like Rampage. Thank See that? Yeah. Rampage. Respectful. Rampage. That's what I said. What do you mean, thank you? No. I was going to say the same thing. No, he wasn't. Yes, I was. He was going to say somebody No, I was not. Like I would never do that to you. Like. I would never do that to you. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You think I'd walk around the office on everybody? You look like Buster Rhymes. You think I would do something like that? Not a chance. Buster Rhymes hate my guts. Why does he hate you? Because his one of his partner's name is Rampage, and they for years they thought I stole his name. For real? Wait, yeah. is this a true story? True story. Wow. Uh, uh, Buster Rhymes, he used to rap with you know a flip mode squad and mm. one of the guys named Rampage. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the guy Rampage came at me on, on Instagram because his his uh handle is close. Oh, his handle is the real Rampage. And mine's Rampage for real, right? Right. <laughs> and the only, reason, <laughs> the only reason why mine's Rampage for real because somebody had a fake Rampage uh Instagram and mm-hmm. Hans Monenkamp told me about it. So I never I never liked social media back in the day. Right. So I started social media anyway. 
the feud went on for a while. And I just, what I did was I broke out the uh, commercial appeal, which is the Memphis um, um, newspaper mm -hmm. of me when I was in high school. And my name was Rampage in high school. That nickname. Yeah. It's been my nickname since I was Since eight years forever. old. Yeah. But but in high school, they did a story about me because I was the only undefeated wrestler. And oh. I had it tattooed on my arm. And so they in in the newspaper they had my name, my nickname, Rampage. Rampage. And, so, and so I sent it to I sent a picture of it to 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 him and he he left me alone. But then one day I I saw um That's Busta, crazy. It's crazy. And wow. I saw Buster Rhymes in a nightclub in Vegas. Yeah. And I wanted to go say what's up to him because I've always been a fan of Buster Rhymes. Right. And then he saw, but I, I know how people are. He was talking to some young lady yeah. and I didn't want to bother him. So he saw me right there and I asked the, even the bottle lady girl, I gave her a tip, said, hey, tell Buster Rhymes Rampage one, say hello to you, you know, maybe take a picture. Yeah. And he just sat there fake talking to the chick for like, I stood there for like five, 10 minutes. I said, oh, okay, I see what it is. I, yeah. I, I remember that him. Alive, yeah, yeah I, I remember him at Rampage was cool. So I was like, oh yeah, he don't like me. So fuck him. <laughs> so fuck Buster <laughs> Rhymes. Nah, Buster, we like you. Ah, fuck Buster Rhymes. We don't like him? <laughs> All right, then Buster's out. Yeah. I fuck. was gonna bring him on as a guest. Ah, fuck Buster Ryan. All right, he's out. Buster, you're out. He got a pretty good song, Skilly Bang, but oh, oh, yeah. he, hey, hey, never mind. I'm a fan, I'm a fan of his music. He's he, yeah. he a great rapper. It's very fast. That, he came out with a new one, Skilly Bang, semi recently. Is it good? It's pretty. Is it bang? Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of his music. So. I, I'm not mad at, but because sometimes I don't be wanting to talk to motherfuckers either. No, no, I feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially <laughs> I'm in a club. No, no, exactly. Half the people that come in here, are like, dude, I met you when I was 18. You looked at me really scary. Remember, you're like, no, I loved you. It's like 10 years ago. <laughs> but I've never heard. I've never heard a bad person say anything bad about you at an event. No, no, I'm cool with most people. But at the airport the last couple of days, I, I was sick, like with food, food poisoning. I was sitting at the airport for hours. Oh, she's and shaking her head. What people, happened? People was coming. No, up no, to no, no, no. Hold up. What happened? Yeah, a lot of people coming up, but I didn't want to. I didn't want. I didn't know if it was the flu or something. Yeah, at first. no. If you're not feeling it, I was sweat. So I didn't want people. To, and people coming, but this is the thing. A lot of people come to me, ask me, "Are you Rampage?" I'm like, "No." They ask me, I always no. say no because they're not a real Rampage. Fan. Right, right. If they say, "What's up, Rampage?" Then I'm like, "Cool," but no, but no one said, "What's up, Rampage?" I've like, seen him at the UFC fight. They knew who he was. Oh yeah, because these oh, motherfuckers. Of course. Yeah. Hey, we had the the, the hoodies Rampage action security go, team. Oh, if, it was if, a movie. If I go to a UFC fight, they know it's me. Oh, of course. But yeah, if I'm at an movie, airport yeah. at, a, at an airport, some strange place, they're like, "Are you Rampage Jackson?" I'm like, especially when I'm fat. When I'm when I'm like, I'm, I get really fat sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Post, oh, what, what, off season, what you off say? Season. What you say? Oh yeah, for why you agree with me on? No, because I I know how it is. Trust <laughs> me, I'm like Patty the Batty. Off my weight cuts, you should see me, bro. I, my brother is even worse. Yeah, my brother, you know, what do you walk around? We just blow up. Don't do that no more. I know yeah. it's bad. It's gonna fuck up it's your metabolism. Bad. Exactly. What do you walk around? We've been at? talking about it a lot. Yeah. Uh, for like 180, give or take. Yeah. Yeah. Try try to stay close. <laughs> try to stay within like 10 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. One thing it, it'll fuck up your metabolism for sure. If it messes up your metabolism because the onboarding of so much food after, or you mean just because you do it so many times? I think your body goes into your your body goes into shock. Got it. Yes. Like you you cut weight. Do you cut weight for your? Some sometimes my brother like had to do it so much worse. There was one time he went from like one seventy five to one forty five, and that was when he was like sixteen. Yeah. So it was just he was already skinny. Not weight cut, just changed him forever. Yeah, that that it made him bigger. That's why that's the only reason why he's bigger uh, than me now. Yeah. That that weight cut, he came back like. 185 two days later he was just like like swollen on the couch like eating till he was puking and eating more like yeah. swollen ankles and yeah it was just hectic yeah it's not good for you yeah. get like food disorders you too know too young too young look to at the boxer yeah. look yeah. at the boxer James Tony and 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 look at mm -hmm. what, what weight he started boxing at mm -hmm. and then look at him now like crazy yeah, yeah. like you got to you got to stay within that and that's what fucked me up as well I think. Yeah. it fucks you up it fucks up your metabolism oh foley it's you you Create these food disorders. It's like unstoppable too. Next, you know, it's like four cheeseburgers in a row. You're still hungry. You're like, yeah. So yeah, shout out to Ipono. <laughs> shout no, out Ipono. Ipono. Hey, oh, that place bad. will make you eat all day. It's so good. It's, it's the best so Hawaiian good. food in Orange so County. Good. One thing I want to touch upon before we let you get out of here. I know yeah. we got to go shoot some of the new jewelry. We have a big campaign we're doing with him um, with our new Cuban eight millimeter. It's like the, our best selling chain, and all our athletes been wearing it. I appreciate all the support for that too. Let's you wore it at the last weigh in. So, and you too, you always wear it. So yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm yeah. not hating. No, because I, I look at you and you winked at me. You said I want to hit you with another fish stick. I no, said, yeah, I'm chilling on that. No, thing. you know what? You know, I, I said that because stick. I told him that I want to start wearing a bunch of chains like Mr. T, and he was like, "Fuck you!" It's only one Mr. T. No, I he didn't say that. Yes, he, he was did. an A team. I said, "No, no, no do they, your they own hurt, thing." They hurt my feelings when he said. I that. would never say that. Okay, I see that little that little. That's so, fit. I, so yeah, he's got yeah, I would never say that. So <laughs> one thing, um, one thing I really want to touch upon is in one, it seems like you guys are being tested periodically. It seems like you guys are always posting the testing and it's uh 
it's not like a traditional BJJ event where you guys can just go and compete. It seems like there's actual protocol, regulation, testing. Yeah. It's cool. It's like a whole platform, right? right? It's a real series, a real event, real real organization. Do you feel that BJJ competitions, like real, like, you know, and I don't want to single anyone out, so I'll just keep it in that term. Right. But do you feel like there should be a testing regulation? Do you feel like the game would change? Should there be similar testing protocol? What's your opinion on this? I think uh, jiu-jitsu would, would look a lot different if there was steroid testing, like actual steroid testing, you know, as far as just the, the excitement of the matches. I think uh, a lot of that that steroid strength, that isometric strength kind of slows a lot of matches down and you see guys getting a lot of still. I mean, there's two ways it can go. There's you get to this full explosive guys, which could be exciting. You know what I mean? There's all all over the place. But, you know, what, what creates, you know, or what makes exciting jiu-jitsu matches like scrambles for the most part, right? You know, the, the transfer of positions or the changing of positions, so blah, 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 boom, into a submission, right? It's kind of like the, the exciting parts yeah. of, of jiu-jitsu. And I think steroids kind of really slows that down a lot because it takes away a lot of those those scrambles and just, you know, makes it so that it's just just strength and pressure and just kind of slows it down, you know? So that's why people, like, look at my brother and his, my brothers and I's game and they kind of think, oh, you know, they're scrambly or, or, or spazzy or whatever, you know, you know you'll see it. But uh, it's, it's it all has a – we're basically fighting around strength, you know, if that makes sense, you know, just getting around to those, those unbreakable grips, you know. If they make this grip, you can't break it. You got to find a way to make it useless, mm -hmm. you know, like those type of theories. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing to say, you know. It's have you, tough one. Have you ever went up against a guy that, that was on steroids? Oh, yeah. Countless. I mean, all of them. I, in jiu-jitsu, everyone, almost everyone is on steroids it's very, at, at the highest level, you know. Do you really feel that? A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, it's like 99.9% .9 of guys. You yeah. Know? And like in UFC Fight Pass, Flow Grappling, IBJJ, all those. Okay. No matter what. Why, no why, matter what. why, they, why they got it like where they don't test? Why they have that? Because it's not the same. Like one is a testing protocol, like a USADA type of thing, right? So they go in, they test all their athletes, and then after everybody gets the, the results. That's why they always post their results, like all natty. Like, And I think that's why it's also super hard to get matchups on one. You know, like Gordon Ryan was signed to one, and then, you know. Or that's like some, not a lot of people realize that he was signed to one yeah. and then he was like I'm out of here he didn't fight once and then ended up just terminating his his contract and then you know for us for for you know we're always trying to get the highest level compet you know we don't even want to fight unless it's against the best right so you know we're always asking for you know the Marigali's all the toughest guys out there but it's real difficult to get them to come over to one because probably because uh, you know there's oh the okay so I'm learning something so the the organization he fights for yeah one tests. in Asia they the test all their athletes all the all, where Mighty Mouse is at, all right. the kickboxing, all the boxing, all the MMA, all the grappler, everybody gets tested. Yeah. And, uh, so there's like usually like however many bouts there are on a card, say there's 12 bouts or whatever. Um, I don't think every fight gets tested, but they randomly select whatever. Mm. And so there is testing. Just the organization. Like I got tested in my last match. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Like UFC, same, same thing. Jalen mm. Turner was in here and people are in here all the time getting tested. They Tested, bring yeah. people here to test them, you know? Yeah, yeah. But not in like flow grappling, not in IBJF, all those like- it's So will you go to, can, are you allowed to go to those other tournaments? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it depends which ones. There's like some competitors to one that they don't really like us doing as much. Like, you know, the, the was it the flow grappling, like the who's number one stuff like that. But we can still do like Gi Worlds and ADCC and things like that, you know, so. And you guys are both in ADCC this year? We're both going to do ADCC no matter what. You guys both got invited? Both got yeah. We both placed last year, so we just yeah. automatic invites into the next. Yeah, so awesome. That's gonna be a huge. That's and the T-Mobile Arena out in Vegas. Oh, it's in Vegas this year. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, it sold out in like ten seconds. It's they sold so many tickets. Yeah, quick. Um, it's gonna it's be gonna one of the biggest events of the when, year. When is that? For sure. August. August. They moved it up. It used to be in September, I believe. So I think it's August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. should. You should try out. You should sign up. We got the the blue trials belt. coming yeah, up. Yeah, blue blue belt. belt. Well, you you still a white belt? I thought you said no, blue, blue belt. belt, but bro, I haven't. I mean, training with you, my ribs broken. I just I'm Man, not just start back compete. training. August, that's plenty of time. What what belt is your manager, Sean Ward? Blue belt. He's a blue belt. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. tapping him out. I might be able to. Are do you? Good. You're blue, right? Yeah. You're blue, right? Yeah. Dude, we need the super fight. Come that would be on. an amazing. I, super I, fight. I, can we please set this up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My manager, Sean Ward. Very good. Sean just is like this all day long. If you do it, I do. I'm a blue belt. I am a blue belt. Oh, oh my God! I will do. I will do it if you do it. I do. I start training right now. Me and you go sign up. I start. I start training. I need some jujitsu training partners. We have the best guys in the world. No, they're too good. Fuck that. I'm not getting embarrassed by fucking kids. Get Bushesha. Or no, Gable or no, Nicky Rod. No. Why not? Or no, Luke. No. Why? Dude, uh, you can't say no to everybody. All right, yes. Mighty Mouse. 
Okay, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is it okay? Hey, but actually, I'm down to do something in here, but that's why we set it up. For sure. Listen, as we wrap this up, you have an amazing career ahead of you. We're excited to go watch you in MMA. We know what you've done, and you and your brother are phenomenal. The respect, the love, the attitude you guys have towards the community, I think, is what separates you guys from everybody. Because as the jujitsu community becomes more of this, like, protagonist and uh, a lot of animosity and really just clickbait content, which is cool. It, it definitely raises the level of the sport, but it's good to see some people just staying true. They don't even use their Instagrams. I mean, it's like their management team runs it. Like they stay so focused to their craft and it shows why well, they're so good. You don't you know? use your, you don't do your own Instagram? The, as of the last couple of months, I haven't. I, I think like two and a half months, something like that. So what do you do with all the girls that slide in your DMs? Send them, send them over to my, my, my <laughs> Straight to Rap page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No Redirect them to now. my Instagram. I got wifey in the corner, so I'm just locked in. But I know. you. I know. But, <laughs> but listen, I, listen, listen, hear me out. I know you got wifey, but it's still good, feel good to get hit on. Trust me, I'm sure dudes sliding in your wife DMs, and I know she probably don't answer them, so, but it still feels good, right? So you don't even see the girl sliding in your DM. So send them I over to me. I, you can turn them down. Like, no, nah, I'm, I'm not interested, but my my boy Rampage okay. is. I got you. I'll they come them. right through. Yeah. Rampage be stoked. You. I'll <laughs> okay. Listen, if you have a happy relationship and you're focused on your craft, do not listen to this man. If you want to turn up, go to Japan, listen to this man. All right. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. When it comes to relationships. I keep my relationships for a long time. Every, every one of my relationships, I keep them for a long time and it don't end because I fucked up. Because I fuck up on day one, so they know they <laughs> <laughs> I'm Barry to GDO. Legends. Rampage Jackson, the Rotolo brothers, only one of them. Make sure you guys follow them on Instagram. It's two of them. Today, we only got one of them. Today. Come on. Oh, okay. It was like a I'm, thing. You I stand see, corrected. There's two right of us. Here, there's, there's two, two of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I stand corrected. I'm sorry. <laughs> but there's one but, right here. But you're the best obviously. looking one, though, right? No. I'll take both, that. I'll they take both look good. Sure. They both are phenomenal athletes. Wait, real quick, just so we know, is uh, your brother going to also compete in MMA? Definitely. Yeah, he wants Both to be really guys. bad. Yeah, he okay. wants to be really bad. It might be a little bit later, probably towards like the end of this year. Got it. But uh, he wants to do it probably oh. after, after ADCC. I'm going to be following your yeah. career. So make sure you guys go check him out on that. one. They're going to be competing in, in MMA. This is going to be your first ever MMA Yeah, match. debut. Yeah. Fired up. His first big debut. Make sure you guys keep Let's supporting. Go. Leave comments, watch, subscribe, like, comment, the whole nine. Go look at Rampage whenever you're free. You might get a good laugh. I'm Bear to GDO. We out.